Hi, this is Alia Bhatt. Hi, I'm Jenna Ortega. It's Ariana Grande. Pulling me away from my position as Congresswoman. All you did was take some of the strings off. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. APAC, I'm coming to tear your kingdom down. Palestine doesn't exist. It never will and it never Israel has. is a fake state. Everyone was saying Israel has a right to defend itself. Why doesn't Iran have rights? You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. There are a lot of uncommitted voters right now, but the big issue is Gaza. So what can we do to convince Harris that she must take a different position now? I have to ask, why is there such controversy around calling it Islamophobic when we know Muslim communities are being targeted, we know the language that is being used. Why is it so hard to use that word? That is my question. How many of you support the position of the Biden administration on Israel and Gaza? Please raise your hand. How many people do not support it? In our video for you today on the news, actress Alia Pot posts in support of Palestine on Instagram. Singer Ariana Grande and actress Jenna Ortega share donation links to Palestine. U.S. Congress member Cori Bush calls out AIPAC in a defiant speech after AIPAC funded her opponent and helped defeat her in a Democratic primary. A user posts a video on X with the caption, quote, Another video of disgusting Israeli tourists heckling Japanese people on the streets. Also, what is she wearing? Japan is a conservative culture. Zero respect. Japan should ban entry for Israeli terrorists. Unquote. A user on X posts a video with the caption, quote, State spokesperson refuses again to say, Iran has right to self-defense. Watch this blatant hypocrisy. Said said, You mentioned the word right, so you're acknowledging they have a right to respond. Miller said, No. Said said, You say Israel has a right to defend itself. Why doesn't Iran? Miller said, I get your point. It's not useful for anyone in the region." Unquote. Kamala Harris is protested by pro-Palestinian protesters who say they won't vote for genocide. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders gets asked by an uncommitted voter how people can change Kamala Harris's position on Gaza. And U.K. Member of Parliament Zara Sultana posts a confrontation she had with someone over Islamophobia and says, quote, "...the sneering contempt of, quote, journalists, unquote, will never stop me from calling out racism and Islamophobic hate." Unquote. Let's get started with actress Alia Pat posting in support of Palestine on Instagram. According to the Hindustan Times, Alia Pat said the following, All children deserve love. All children deserve safety. All children deserve peace. All children deserve life. And all mothers deserve to be able to give their children those things. Hashtag all eyes on Rafa. Now let's get to singer Ariana Grande and actress Jenna Ortega sharing donation links to Palestine. According to Wafa Agency, Ariana Grande shared a donation link to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund on her Instagram story. And the 21-year-old Wednesday star, Jenna Ortega, shared a donation link to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. According to Teen Vogue, it's not the first time Ortega has expressed support for Palestine. In March 2022, Ortega tweeted from her now-defunct account, We must never give up on the people of Ukraine, Yemen, Palestine, Kashmir, Iraq, Syria, the list goes on, unfortunately. Moreover, according to Artists for Ceasefire, Jenna Ortega signed an open letter to U.S. President Joe Biden asking for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. And in relation to this, Jenna Ortega said the following on Instagram, Masses debating over a ceasefire, while thousands upon thousands of children continue being slaughtered. Where is the humanity? In addition, as we mentioned in our last video, according to Artists for Ceasefire, Ariana Grande has signed an open letter to U.S. President Joe Biden asking for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as well. Pulling me away from my position as congresswoman. All you did was take some of the strings off. Let's be clear. 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 Let's talk about what it really is. Because see, now I don't have to worry about some strings that I have attached to as much as I love my job. But all they did was radicalize me, and so now they need to be afraid.
See, now they about to see this other Corey, this other side. Because I, because let me say this. I just grew up a whole lot more over the last few weeks. Just grew up a whole different way. And so what they are about to get. So the, the thing is this. The thing is this, I don't, I don't think that anything, there is nothing that happens in my life that happens in vain. So if this happened, it's because it was meant to happen. And let me say, it's because of the work that I need to do. And let me say this. APAC, I'm coming to tear your kingdom down. There are a lot of uncommitted voters right now, oftentimes young people and people like myself who are absolutely wanting to see Donald Trump defeated. But the big issue is Gaza. So what can we do Good. to convince Harris that she must take a different position now? How many of you support the position of the Biden administration on Israel and Gaza. Please raise your hand. How many people do not support it? Okay. Just as you said, you're absolutely right. There are many, many people who desperately want to make sure that Trump doesn't get elected and want to elect Kamala, but they're concerned. How do we change it? I will tell you that on this issue, I am a friend of President Biden and I've been very supportive of a lot of his domestic initiatives, but on this issue, he is wrong. I can't even explain to you why there are so few Democrats in the Senate, at least. There aren't more than, I would say, six or seven out of 50 or so Democrats in the Senate who are prepared to vote against money for Netanyahu. And they are, that's right, it has a lot to do with APAC, it has a lot to do with money in politics. And by the way, poll after poll shows that the American people are not supportive of what Netanyahu is doing. And by the way, in the Democratic Party, those numbers are very, very high. So to answer your question, what we have got to do at a grassroots way is say to the Democratic Party is that the policies that you have right now regarding Netanyahu are wrong. And if you really want to get young people involved in this campaign, the time is now to change those policies. But at least, did they have the right to respond? I mean, is that part of self-defense? So as I, I just answered that question. Uh, and I just no, wanna, I, 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 on the on. issue of self-defense. I just answered that question in response right. to what I got from okay. Simon. A right is one thing. Right. Uh, taking steps that are productive and are conducive to the interests of their people, right. that are conducive to the interests of the broader region, are another question. And in no way would a retaliatory action by Iran right. in any way serve the interests right. of the Iranian people or the broader region. And that's precisely why I'm asking you, because you, you mentioned the word right. So you are acknowledging that they do have the right to respond. No, I did not acknowledge that. Okay. I acknowledged so, the question. Let me, okay, then let me ask you, um, if this was, let's say, happened in any of the Western capitals, wouldn't they be sort of obligated to respond? Uh, I'm not going to deal with a hypothetical Okay, side. all right. Uh, we'll deal with something real. Last week, uh, a week ago yesterday, Sunday, an errant uh, rocket hit, or maybe intentional, hit a, a small town of Medjil Shams, a Syrian town, Syrian citizens, and so on. And you said that Israel had a right to defend itself. I'm not you person, but I'm saying. Yeah. So what's different? I mean, you know, everybody was, that all, everyone was saying Israel has a right to defend itself. Why doesn't Iran have rights to itself when the guest house, you know, I don't want to make comparisons, but it's like the guest house in London or maybe Blair House or anything. I mean, 
something that really touched the sovereignty of Iran. So I take the point of your question, Saeed. Um, it is not in any way, however, right. useful at all for anyone in the region for Iran to consider taking such steps because of the risk, as I said, um, that this could um, uh, potentially get out of control. Mm -hmm. And that's the message we will continue to impress on them. This question about naming it as Islamophobic is really important mm -hmm. because that allows us to shape our response. If we're not identifying what is happening, the language that is being used, and what this is about, we're not going to be able to address this it's fundamentally. Clearly, it's, it's clearly anti-Muslim riots. Keir Starmer, Avec Cooper, have both been condemning that for its racism. They've said the attacks on the mosques are terrible. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't know whether they use the word Islamophobia. They didn't. They've certainly said racism. We all agree about that. But I'm just kind of, you know, asking I you, do you think it's important to control and manage I think it's really important to reassure communities that are most affected <clears throat> of by the violence that we're seeing. And I have to ask, why is there such controversy around calling it Islamophobic when we know Muslim communities are being targeted, we know the language that is being used. Why is it so hard to use that word? That is my question. Well, I've been talking to my dad who reminded me that when he was growing up in the 70s and 80s, this is the racist, far-right, fascist violence mm. that they had to deal with growing up and now we are seeing um, violence descend upon towns and cities across the country and we need to call this racist and we need to call it Islamophobic because if we don't, we fail to really address what's going on and language is really important. I noticed that the Daily Telegraph were uh, calling it a counter-protest by Muslims. No, you have one side that is burning down citizens' advice bureaus, libraries, targeting mosques, attacking black and brown people who are walking in their communities, uh, targeting women who are wearing the hijab, and you have others who are defending their communities sure. and standing up when they are finding no other help. So we really need to be quite clear about what's going on. And I have to say that there shouldn't be a surprise that this, that this has happened. There is decades of work by the, far, by the right wing press and by politicians who have fanned the flames of this hate. When we look at the, the role that uh, mm. media outlets like GB News has played, that uh, the Daily Mail has played. Well, hang on, what has my newspaper done? What so, has my newspaper So if we look done? at the front pages of the Daily Mail, yeah. and if we look at the language that has been used mm. by outlets like the Daily Mail, and as well as... Can you give me an example? Can you give me an example? I can give you a number well, of examples. Come on, give me one now. The language around well, come on, let's have one now. And Muslims... Let's have one now. ...and dehumanising. So what I'm saying is there are politicians... Do you have an example? There are politicians and there are journalists who have played an active role Role and fanning the flames of hate and division, and we are seeing that play out. Just pause for a I second, would... because you did specifically mention the Daily Mail. W Could you what, tell me what, what, what specifically? Is the specific I, can, thing? I can list a number of headlines okay, well, to Andrew on, after the show, because ah. I think this has taken up a lot of time. But what I would say is that media outlets and journalists, as well as politicians, we had a former Home Secretary who referred to refugees as an invasion. We've mm. had Nigel Farage, also on GB News, um, saying that British Muslims don't have the same values, uh, don't share British values. So when we look at the complicity, uh, we have to be, uh, you know, there's a lot of mirrors that people need to be looking into. And I think also the role that ITV has also played in terms of uh, inviting Nigel Farage, allowing him to rehabilitate his image. If you are unclear as to what this is all about, according to Al Jazeera English, far-right groups have been attacking immigrants and Muslims in the UK. As for how this all started, according to Al Jazeera English, during a Taylor Swift-themed dance and yoga workshop at a community center in Southport, England, three young girls were stabbed to death by a 17-year-old suspect. He was born in the Welsh capital, reportedly to Christian Rwandan parents. False information on social media claimed the suspect was a Muslim immigrant. Those rioting are vocal about their hatred of immigrants, but there is also a sense of underlying xenophobia against minority communities in the UK, especially Muslims, said analysts. In relation to this, Zara Sultana said the following, What will it take for political leaders to explicitly call out the Islamophobic and racist nature of the violence we are witnessing across the country? I've said it before and I'll say it again. The enemy of the working class travels by private jet, not migrant dingy.